So in a recent video that I did at the Green Key Wetland and Nature Center, two of my subscribers had some questions regarding uh, if I did any processing off camera and the settings that I use for the pictures. So in today's episode, we're going to dive in to look at those pictures. Bear in mind that unlike these DSLR cameras here, the P950 is just a glorified point and shoot camera or bridge camera. And I know it's easy to say what the camera cannot do, but if we wanted to do it at a different level and we were to get DSLR cameras, when I went through and I selected Nikon DSLR cameras that can do exactly the, the, the same things that the P950 can do, this is what we're looking at spending depending on which model we get. So whether we go the middle of the road or a lower end with the 780, we're talking about uh, just over $2,000 for the camera body only. And then if we're going to get a long range lens that can do what the P950 is doing, we're talking about, you know, over 16 grand, but you, you see the hefty price tag and, you know, realistically, no one is going to spend this money uh, for if they're just a, a hobbyist photographer and not doing it professionally. So I think we can all agree that the P950 allows us to have a camera that's relatively decent and compact that you can carry around easily because the combined weight of the camera as well as this lens if you're going with a DSLR uh, that's going to be almost twenty thousand dollars and let's face it the average consumer is not going to spend that on a camera that they're going to just use for for family trips and stuff like that so I think we can all agree that having the P950 is practical and reasonable as far as pricing. Are you going to get the same quality photos as you would get using one of these cameras? No, but realistically, when we take pictures, usually we share them over social media with friends and family members, or, you know, we do pictures that we might hang on the wall at home and the resolution that we're getting from the P950 is sufficient for those purposes. So I wouldn't complain too much about that. Frankly, I would have preferred a one inch sensor on the P950 and, you know, probably some improvements in the, in the, in the chips that they use as software, uh, just to give you a little bit better performance in some areas. But, uh, and I'm going to talk about that later, but I think for the most part, the P950 is a good compromise based on the alternative, which is, you know, spending about you know, almost $20,000 for a DSLR setup. This was the first picture that appeared in the video. And if you're curious as to what the settings are, let me do the file info. And here you can see the resolution of this picture. Now I decided to lower the resolution. The P950 can go up to 16 megapixels for the resolution. I decided to drop it to 12 megapixels and the reason why I did that, I wanted the picture to fit properly in the, uh, on the screen for video editing. This is basically a 4K resolution. Uh, 16 megapixels would have given me more detail, but then what would have happened is that the sides would have been cut off and you'd have these black stripes on each side of the picture. So I decided to go with uh, 12 megapixels. And of course the camera automatically sets the ISO, which is 400. Now this was very bright sunlight. I was probably about uh, 15 feet away and I zoomed in as close as I could to snap this picture. And of course all these settings, the, the shutter speed, the aperture, this also shows the zoom level. Uh, all of this was selected. The zoom, of course I control that and then the shutter speed and the aperture that's determined by the camera. And of course the camera will open the aperture as wide as it feels it's necessary to capture that image in the best possible lighting. So moving on to the next picture, this is a picture I took of a turtle sticking its head out of the water. And I did use my polarizing lens to get rid of some of that glare, but in the end I had to edit this picture anyway. And you know, the polarizing filter will help you and it will help, it will get rid of some of that glare. But when all is said and done, you still have to do some editing if you wanna create a certain effect on this picture. So coming into adjustments here on the standard 
picture editing software that comes with Windows 10, also available on Windows 11, I said, you know what, what can I do? So you can do that. You can get rid of some other light. You can increase the light. Now the, the increasing the light will obviously bring up the glare on the water surface, but then you begin to see more details on the turtle which is what I did. I wanted to see more details on that turtle's head. And then of course, to compensate, you can also bring up the color. And for the clarity, you can move that. And that gives you a bit more sharpness, improves the contrast, and improves the clarity. So if you were to, if you were to take a, a picture like this, then that's what you could do to improve the picture. Undo all, the seat goes back, everything goes back. And then we come here to bring up the brightness because since the turtle is a dark color you can do that and then you improve the color and then you just improve the clarity and you get a wonderful picture trust me even the professional photographers oftentimes have to edit their their pictures or their videos because uh, it, it's it's very difficult to get a perfect picture sometimes you do but not all the time so let's undo all of that and said cancel and we can move on to the next picture. So this is a very, another very nice picture that I took off a dragonfly. I basically just used the auto setting on the camera and I just zoomed all the way in. I think in this picture, I may have used the bird watching setting and the advantage in using the bird watching setting is that it allows you to put that green uh, rectangle in the middle of the screen onto the subject. Once you put that green rectangle onto the subject, then the camera knows exactly what you're focusing on. And in so doing, it can focus on this, the dragonfly, instead of the foliage that's behind it. Here we can see the settings and all of these were automatically determined by the camera. Of course, if we look at the zoom, of course, that, that's determined by me. I zoomed in to a level that I thought that was appropriate. I could have gone in closer. However, I wanted to show the background. See the spider's web right here? I wanted that to come out in the picture because obviously this dragonfly is hanging out. I'm, I'm not sure if he or she is trying to eat the spider or knowing that the spider's web is in a good position they're just hanging out for anything that might get caught and they might want to grab it or knowing that insects normally hang out around here. I don't know, but you know, it's interesting taking these nature shots and seeing how these animals behave in their natural habitat. 